Rashmi, thank you very much for uh, joining me here. So tell, tell us about A2P Energy, what do you do? So A2P stands for Agree to Power. Mm -hmm. uh, we are basically a company working on one side with farmers on crop waste management. On the other hand, work with the industries to help them move from fossil fuel to green fuels. Mm -hmm. So we do have a manufacturing unit uh, based out of Punjab. Uh, where we work with farmers on stubble collection and then conversion that to biofuels. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, we've also launched a platform for biofuel trading. Uh, we work with uh, small manufacturers, right. farmers uh, on stubble collection, uh, and then work with big corporates and thermal power plants uh, to consolidate the supply for biomass, crop waste, and green fuels and supply them so that the coal can be replaced with the greener fuels. Right, so tell us about how the process works, I mean, uh, including the collection of stubble and how do you do it and then uh, convert it into a fuel? So, uh, it's a, in India we have very uh, distributed farmlands. Mm -hmm. It's an average farm holding would be six, seven acres per farmer family. Uh, so for a big player, it's very hard to work with thousands of farmers on crop waste collection. Uh, so for that, uh, we've managed to build a platform uh, which uses fair amount of technology for supply chain planning uh, using our satellite-based imagery models. We can identify where crop waste is getting burned on the fields. Mm. So that gives us a fair idea that if it, it is getting burned, uh, then it's of uh, no use today. Uh, then we work with the farmers on collection part of it. Uh, at an all India level, we work with biofuel manufacturers, which are small manufacturers. Uh, they already have some set up, so we help them coordinate with the farmers on stubble collection. And once they convert uh, or we convert ourselves in our facilities, uh, then we process that to a fuel which can be used in thermal power plants. And then that fuel basically replaces you know, coal in thermal power plants for electricity right. generation or for steam generation in, in companies. Right, so uh, to, if I were to ask you for an illustration, so suppose you said you had one kilo of uh, stubble, yeah. how does that convert and into what and what is the, let's say, the energy capability of? Okay, so one kg of, uh, let's suppose, stubble, which is basically crop paste, uh, once it's collected, it's collected in form of bales mm. so that it can be stored over, over the year. Uh, just before usage, you open the bale, uh, you chop it in smaller pieces, uh, you dry it out, uh, then there is uh, basically a hammer mill which uh, makes the particle size small, mm -hmm. uh, then it's a palletization or briquettes, whatever you want to make, uh, that is make, made in the second step. Mm -hmm. uh, it's some power plants can directly use this uh, briquettes and pellets in the raw form, um, but there's a next step also which, you, which thermal power plants want more advanced based fuels. Uh, it's called a torrefication technology where you can convert the biomass into actual fuel, mm -hmm. uh, fuel like coal. Mm. And so the shape and size is very similar to mm. a coal. Uh, that's, you know, we use biomimicry principles for that. You know, in nature, how does coal gets formed? You know, biomass gets buried, high temperature, high pressure. But no, over millions of years. Yeah, yeah over millions <laughs> of years and no, uh, no oxygen. Yeah. Uh, so we've built a system which can replicate mm -hmm. that in an industrial setting and convert the biomass into uh, coal form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the the process uh, which we have uh, built in in our uh, plant. Right. But I would say majority of uh, the plants in India uh, can convert that into first generation fuel, which is the brown pellets, which is the first stage I explained. Mm -hmm. uh, that we help them get on board our platform, consolidate supply, and give it to the bigger users. So give us a sense of the numbers that you're dealing with or the volume of uh, throughput uh, in term, let's say in a good year. Uh, so our, our typical manufacturing unit can take around 5,000 uh, tons of uh, biomass, uh, which comes from 2,000 or 3,000 uh, acres. So that's a typical small size plant. Uh, bigger plants can go up to 11,000, 10,000 uh, tons per year. Right. And you have your own plant and you also source and supply to other plants? Yes, so we have our own plant, uh, but you know we can scale so much through our own manufacturing units. Uh, we found out that there are a number of smaller units across India. A uh, lot of farmers across India wants to utilize their 
uh, crop waste. So that's where our technology platform comes into picture. It's called Carbon to Climate, mm -hmm. where they can come on board the platform, uh, tell us you know, how much extra biomass or extra biofuel uh, they have, uh, and then we work consolidate that supply and work with the end users, which are more uh, bigger organization or thermal power plants to supply them this consolidated supply. So we assure them quality, consistent supply, uh, pricing. Right. Also from you know small manufacturers, uh, you know generally the payment cycle for these bigger uh, organizations are 60 days, some have 90 days. These small manufacturers or farmers can't wait so long for their cash cycles. Through our platform, we also ensure same day payments to these small manufacturers or farmers, but then we work with the with the front uh, bigger companies uh, to wait for our cash flows to come in. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, there are multiple benefits both at the manufacturer level and the company level. Company gets consolidated supply, consistent quality, uh, reliability. They don't have to then talk to, you know, tens of manufacturers or hundreds of farmers. Everything happens right. through online. Uh, and one of the biggest advantage I would say the platform is also impact reporting. Uh, even if some company is using uh, biofuels today, they don't know how much air pollution it has saved or uh, how many farmers, entrepreneurs' lives it has impacted, how many income generation has happened. So all that becomes as part of the dashboard of the platform which the corporates can use for their ESG reporting. Right, and, and uh, I mean it seems like a win-win that a farmer would want to give you uh, his or her bio waste, uh, but that I'm assuming does not happen and therefore the market is big. So what's the gap there and why is there so much of a gap? Why, do, why don't farmers automatically want to sell their bio waste, uh, their stubble as opposed to let's say burning it, which they do in winter? Because uh, you know, for a corporate to take that, it's very, very seasonal, right? Mm -hmm. So if farm, some farmer has a typical bio waste, they say, you know, I have waste from five acres. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for a corporate then to deal with thousands of farmers mm -hmm. like that, you know, check uh, consistency in terms of moisture, right size. So all that becomes a, uh, too much variation and some of the corporates wants you know their internal processes of procurement sure. everything is very lengthy you, know, you need uh, let's suppose a GST number so to deal with so many thousands of farmers it becomes very challenging so corporates want a consolidated form of supply if if they want to shift and some of them are very very big users like currently we work with some of the corporates which have requirements of 800 tons per day. Mm -hmm. So uh, that means they have to work with you know, hundreds of farmers daily if they plan to work uh, or take this. What industry farmers. would this be? Cement industry okay. would be mm. very, very high mm. uh, coal usage. Uh, some of the chemical industries, uh, paper industry. So, yeah, so some of these are very, very high intensive energy usage and most of them are uh, using coal right now. So you're saying farmers uh, uh, don't see an incentive to go and sell it because they would rather just burn it off rather than you know uh, go and find the potential buyer and who in turn of course is not incentivized because he's too small. Yeah, he's too small. It's you know one issue is also accessibility. One farmer may not have machinery to mm. actually collect it, make mm. it in a bundle form. So as an individual farmer, they don't they lack those resources. Right. Also, it's very hard you know for us or a small farmer to go and talk to a procurement manager. You know, I've got the supply. So it's you know that's the gap which which is right uh, there. And but that's what you're tr yeah, filling and trying to fill. Yeah, that's that's our platform which is trying to fill, mm. uh, work with corporates, uh, consolidate their requirement, and then work with farmers. Uh, and it's not only just farmers, it is also for a typical small time biofuel manufacturers, if they are, let's suppose, making briquettes mm. from biofuels, that manufacturer also has very similar challenges. And some of these are unorganized players, they don't have you know proper registrations. Uh, it's very hard for them, again, for to manage cash cycles they can't work with corporates and wait for a few months for their cash to come in. So that's where we consolidate both the small manufacturers of biofuels and also the farmers and consolidate their supply. Right, and and uh, tell us about where this is going. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I mean, I can see now that you pointed out some of the clear uh, logistical challenges of, of scaling this up. Uh, where do you see this going and uh, where could you potentially solve these, some of these problems that you pointed out? So, uh, we feel now that it's a right time for the industry to move to biofuels. A uh, couple of reasons. One is the coal 
uh, market itself got disrupted. The coal prices have almost doubled in uh, last mm -hmm. one year. Uh, and not even just pricing, even the supply has been disrupted. So few times in between, there was shortage yeah. of uh, coal. Yeah. Uh, so then the companies wanted, you know, started mm -hmm. looking outside, you know, what are the alternate fuels. Second is also uh, government of India has put in their own targets. Prime Minister Modi has announced that, you know, net 50% uh, renewable and then 100% carbon neutral by 2070. So they've already got uh, some of these companies notices, high coal users have got notices to uh, explore other uh, fuel sources. So it's, you know, both from a market conditions perspective, plus also, you know, government policy uh, changes which are forcing uh, these organizations to, sh to shift to greener fuels. Very interesting. So, Sukhmit, what made you set this company up? Uh, it's a very uh, personal story. I I was in US in 2010-11. I came back to India, uh, joined Indian School of Business as associate director, working with startups, corporates, uh, mostly research to action projects. Uh, I met Dr. Robert Perry, who was heading European Bioenergy Research Institute. Uh, when I came back to Chandigarh, uh, I had two small kids. I could see that pollution impacting their, uh, you know, breathing every winters. Uh, plus also the work at Indian School of Business gave me exposure working with uh, policy changes, farmers, and this issue of stubble burning came uh, every year. Mm. Uh, fortunately, uh, my co-founder, Dr. Robert, in, in UK was also working on similar uh, uh, technologies. And we got support from a family office in UK called Dr. O o Oglesby Charitable Trust. They said that they'd like to support our work and in 2018, I left my job and started this uh, company full time. Yeah, right, wonderful. Uh, and I and I do wish you all the best for this. Uh, last question: What do you want to take away, or what do you think you could take away from a gathering like this? I think it's uh, a couple of things. One is uh, having learning thing from our peers. A lot of people are doing great work, startups, uh, corporates who have done a lot of work on climate. Uh, so it's always inspiring to hear their stories and learn from them. Uh, second is uh, more from a business point of view, uh, looking forward to uh, meeting companies which want uh, go towards net zero, uh, and we can offer them solutions of uh, cleaner fuels uh, through our platform. Wherever they are based in India, we can do that. Wonderful, and yeah. do wish you all the best for this. Thanks Thank you. A lot. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you.